Like, I mean, who among us hasn't been hurt by mean girl behavior? Like overhearing someone talking shit about you or like learning later that you've been the subject of mean gossip. Like the shame of it and the sadness and the outrage you feel when you've been treated cheaply and badly by your school friends or colleagues or whatever. It's scarring stuff, isn't it? Most of us can remember in like extreme detail the mean things that others have said to us. It's like every insult is branded in excruciating detail into our flesh when like most compliments seem to, you know, go in one ear and out the next. Okay, first and foremost, let's just define a mean girl because I don't think a mean girl is somebody who's mean to you because if that was the truth, then we'd all be mean girls. We've all been mean to somebody. I think a mean girl is a very specific type of person that looks for and targets people in order to belittle them and bully them. A mean girl is somebody who's self-focused and self-centered, a person who wants to be the main character and have all the positive focus on them and all the negative focus on somebody else. I feel like a mean girl is somebody who's incredibly insecure and shallow and has no other way of validating themselves except to make fun of other people. So I think a mean girl is a very specific type of person and I would say that people who are mean to you are people who took opportunities to sort of engage in gossip about you. That's just like a learning curve. I think we all have to learn the hard way growing up. How, what kind of people do we want to be? Do we want to be the kind of people that talk? Do we want to be the kind of people that say things bluntly? Look, especially in the neurodivergent communities, how many people get called, you know, all kinds of words because they're blunt and forward? So I think there's a difference between being a mean girl and being somebody who's just like socially awkward and maybe like too blunt. And then there's like the combination of the both, right? So for human beings, such ridiculously social group animals as we are, the biggest fear is always to be kicked out of the group. Back when I was what, 13, 14, I was close friends with these other two girls and we were like a little trio. And one of the girls would like more or less every day take it upon herself to band together with me or the other girl and spend the entire day picking on the unpicked girl. I still like remember almost with shivers the feeling of every morning finding out whether today I would be chosen to pick or to be picked on and like the stress and panic those days when I was the one for- Oh my god, ew. Talk about pressure. I grew up in a suburb. You were friends with everybody. Nobody was allowed to be excluded. ...to stand the teasing. It was completely arbitrary too. Like we couldn't do anything to avoid this weird and sinister dynamic. But I remember one morning, really quite far into this horrible routine of ours, that for some reason, the other girl and I silently somehow agreed to that day choose each other and pick on the first girl instead. For a whole day, she was the ostracized Whoa. and like lowest in the picking order. Oh, the triumph when we realized that we had this type of power to completely turn the hierarchy on its end. Terrible, but triumphant. And just like that, we had turned into the mean girls ourselves. Oh God, pubescent girlhood, is there a hotter hell? Anyway, needless to say, one day of this new hierarchy and the dynamic was broken. No more teasing of anyone and the three of us could like happily move on mm -hmm. in our friendship in a kinder and like less terrifying mood. I think when we are in this city... What's this B-roll? What's happening here? What's this B-roll? Ingrid says you were also homeschooled. Yeah, but guys, homeschooling doesn't mean you don't hang out with other kids. I was part of an independent study program. We had to go to field trips. We had to deal with like 10, 20, 30 families at a time. And also I went to public school for part of time and most of my siblings went to public school their whole life. So... <clears throat> Same thing. Like, even in public school, you have to get along with the kids you're hanging out with. Not all of them. There's a lot of them. There's hundreds, thousands. But, you know, within reason, like your church group friends or like if you're socializing in a group with parents, like the idea is like you get along with people. You know, this whole mean girl shit in high school, like that's for the kids with shitty parents. I'm sorry. But that's why I'm saying regular bullying and just like gossiping and stuff. That's just normal, too. You don't have to be a mean girl to deal with bullying. Right. You don't have to do, you don't have to be a part of some sort of like what she's exactly describing in order to experience some sort of alienation in school. Right. Like alienation in school happens regardless of mean girls being involved because humans in general are alienating creatures. You're part of the clique or you're not part of the clique. You're part of the group or you're not part of the clique. Right. 
But like social dynamics exist everywhere, in my opinion. And I really every day am more convinced every day. I'm convinced every day that life is high school with money. I just see it over and over again. This past debate with Joe Biden and Trump. <laughs> if that wasn't a high school debate class, I don't know what that was situation as children or adults when we're like feeling meanly or unjustly treated by people we know or you know strangers being rude in traffic or whatever is like a normal response to like wonder like why on earth are they so rude like how can they treat other people this way like this type of like appalled outrage you know what i mean but hello now let's be honest who among us has never gossiped or said something mean or been in some way inconsiderate or rude true i think it's human nature True. That's what I mean. You don't have to be a mean girl to gossip or be a mean girl to pick on people. I learned this when I worked like in different jobs with people. The clicks were crazy. You really had to make a decision about like what part of the click you were going to be a part of. And there was always a woman, always a woman who just loved to gossip and know the tea on everybody. And it was just like, oh, yeah. And they want to drag you in with them. And girl, it's spicy. Look at the way we watch tea on the Internet. We like tea. We like spice. It's not fun being in it, but you know. To, you know, look at ourselves as the hero of the story and to live our lives with the genuine belief that we are good people. In general, I think most people cut themselves a lot more slack and excuse their own bad behavior much more than they would other people's. But for the last like several years, I've been thinking more and more that actually I don't want to like justify my own bad behaviors and I want to stop making excuses for myself. I was getting tired of these like far-fetched contrived explanations on why I behaved or thought or felt this and that. Like I find it much more interesting and decent for that matter to look honestly at myself. When I look at like Okay, I will say this B-roll is interesting because it's like her. And at the same time, it's kind of smart because like no one can ever come for her B-roll like in terms of copyright. But I think it's kind of interesting that... You know, I don't know, this, I guess. Like, it's it's an interesting decision as a creative. Alice says it's all fun and games till this tea spilled on you. Can I tell you, again, I do not care if people talk about me as long as it's true, right? Like, I don't care because, like, of course you're going to talk about me. Like, I'm very interesting. But also, like, as long as it's true, I don't care. The only problem I've ever had in life is, like, why you got to lie about people? I do not lie about people. And I think that's a game most people can't play because they can't like they don't know how to like tear someone down. So they like lie about you. Don't lie about me, bitch. And you can talk as much shit as you want, because if you just don't like who I am, like that's OK. Talk about it, girl. Human's going to human. I don't care. But I know lying is also part of being a human. It's just the only part that's like so annoying to me because I'm like, well, that's no fun. Now I can't engage. See, if the internet got to the point where we could genuinely just like disagree on what it was true about one another, then we could have the most amazing collaborations and debates and they'd get heated. But everybody has to lie. Everybody has to like take it too far or lie about something or assume so much of the other person. Like, bro, we could have so much good drama that had nothing to do with lying and it would be so much more interesting. But OK, whatever. People lie, though. Boring people like my own teenage self and the intricate hierarchies and group dynamics that I was part of back then I well first of all I get a little scared but also I think that if I really look at my own motivations for being part of this mean girlness going around there were really just two main motivations first of all to like contribute to the group and use gossip or enmity to other groups or whatever as a glue to stick the group together so basically a fear of being left out it's like a social lubricant, isn't it? To complain about the boss together or to speak meanly about celebrities that totally. we've never even met. Totally. Thank totally. you so much to Oleada for sponsoring this video. Oleada is a New York-based bag brand founded oh. by female professionals for all of us modern women. So she's like a high end -y kind of content creator. Is that what I'm seeing here? Like it's a very specific... See, these clothes look so good on her. They're definitely not my aesthetic, generally speaking, but I do like them. You know what I'm saying? Like, I kind of like it, but I couldn't. It's not my vibe, but I like it. Like, I like her aesthetic. I like her place. Like, I like her clothes, but it's not like. You know, I was just telling my partner, can you imagine being one of those people that like actually get ready to go out every day? Like, even when I worked at a normal job, let's be real. I was not like sex in the city getting ready every day. Let's be real. I was doing the bare minimum to get out of the house and go to work because it was one of my three jobs. 
I'm, I worked with hairnets and caps on. So like I literally like getting ready was not even a real thing. But like being a person who has a job where you have to get ready every day and a really like like I okay everybody relax I wear the same clothes every day on stream okay like I'm not getting ready I'm just like kind of grooming because you know you girl girls got to groom but she like doesn't groom she gets ready this isn't just grooming this is like getting ready you know what I'm saying does any of that make sense I feel like it's a different category of person I do fantasize about being a getting ready kind of person but realistically like it knocks my spoons out I'm literally out of energy by the time I'm done getting ready, I just want to go to bed. <laughs> oh, this is cute, though. She looks cute. I like this look. I like this one the best. I like this bag the best, too. Beza says, most days I put on pants and a sweater with a collar to look semi-profesh for work, but I'm so lazy. Are you lazy or does it really exhaust you? Because I, th I thought I was lazy. It literally makes me want to die. Like, I'm tired. Like, it's not just being lazy. I'm literally exhausted. Like, I'm tired. You know what I mean? Like, it's not fun. It doesn't give me more spoons. It takes away my energy. It, like, tortures me. This is a long ad. So, why don't you go take a look at all the other... The other... You know what I mean? Like, it, it's, it literally makes me tired. It doesn't make me feel good to, like, get ready. And I realize, like, oh, that's kind of a bummer. Like, sometimes I wish I was one of those people who, like, loved getting ready. But I don't. I like get annoyed and I'm just like, I'm I'm just going to stay home. Like when I used to go to like, you know, parties, like <laughs> I used to have fun dressing up for those. But then I would feel exhausted and then I would be like, OK, and then I would go and then I would come home and just. Yeah, it's not funny. Like you realize about yourself like, damn, these people get up and just look cute every day. I love that for them. Like I do. I love that for them. Ugh. Another life. Maybe in another life, I would have been a fashionista. The motivation for being mean is, you know, the classic envy. Because, of course, when we envy someone, it's much easier to bring them down to our level than to push ourselves up to theirs. So the more you start to look at it, the more you notice envy is absolutely got them everywhere, isn't it? Again, we are such like a social group animal. So True. comparing ourselves to others is like catnip to us. I mean... <laughs> Would we even have any type of social media if comparing ourselves to others wasn't a human thing? I okay, just for the record, though, I think it's important to distinguish comparing yourself to others and using other people's like a Pinterest board. I feel like I use a lot of people as a Pinterest board in the same way. Like, I don't compare like, oh, I wish I had that. Instead, I say, like, do I like that or not? I think I use other people to figure out what I like more than thinking I want what they have. I think like, oh, I want what I want. And I'm trying to figure out out of what they want, how much of it is something that I like or I want to replicate or don't like. You know what I'm saying? Like we found this really beautiful house in town and it was like a gorgeous house. And we were looking at it and I was like, this is a beautiful home. It was very expensive, like millions. And I was like, it's a beautiful home and everything. But do I want this home? And it's like, not really. The layout isn't actually what I want. And not that I would ever be able to afford it, but it's kind of nice to look at it and think, is this really what I want? Because I think it also humbles you in a way and makes you realize like, you don't even want this stuff. What do you really want? Like I used to love cars, not literally, but I used to love like Mustangs and Broncos. And I used to have like this dream of having a pickup. And I like, I like kind of love the idea of having an aesthetic, but I really don't care about cars. I just like, like the way certain cars feel when I drive them. But then I don't really need it either. And a need and a want is so specific. But I think it's a good way to reassure yourself. Like, girl, you don't even want that. You know, you know what comes to mind is Trisha Paytas's rainbow burka, Birkin bag, Birkenstock, Birkin. Oh, I'm so bad with brands. But her like, you know, her $100,000 rainbow purse. And she's been trying to sell it for years. And that's like the big joke. She only bought it because she wanted it for like a video or whatever. And she hates it. And it's like very funny. And it's like, yeah, I don't want to do that. I don't want to spend six figures on a purse just for a video. I mean, I'm so aware of my own human nature in this because I've been an influencer for so long now and my creative work on my platforms is so ridiculously measurable in numbers. You know, followers, likes, views, downloads, you know, view duration, engagement, click-through rates, and not to mention how much money I get paid from sponsors. 
every single aspect of this job is measurable through a number and numbers of course are so easy to compare so i've just learned that to be able to live a happy and sane life with this as a job i have to stay away from the numbers and from comparing myself to other influencers but you know just like okay so for comparison <laughs> this is her instagram and let's see 122,000 followers uh sweden london author okay let's see yeah her instagram is very specific she has a very she's in a very specific bubble i don't know very many people in this particular bubble but it's very like i could see her coming across like a carrie bradshaw or like the marketing teams in new york or some bullshit or like london love it like i'm a bullshit in a positive way but like okay yeah it's like book books and like parties but also low key and kind of simple and elegant, kind of beautiful. Yeah, it's a very clean, huh? It's a very specific kind of, so random. Oh, is this a sponsored post? See how she's not a baddie? Like she's not sexual. Like this is very neutral to me. Like I can't tell if she's trying to be sexy. I don't think so. I think she's trying to be beautiful or like elegant-y. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not very, like, sexual. Like, with the fresh and fit girl, guys see her and be like, she's half naked. She doesn't even look naked. She just looks neutral. Like, her body is neutral to me. It doesn't feel like she's trying. Or maybe it's because she has small features. Yeah, like, this feels very, like, that's a body. Yep. Like, I feel like she's very much, I'm not sure who she is. I'm not getting much off of her. Like, I can't tell who is she? What's her thing? Yeah, it feels almost like she's a model. Like, this doesn't feel like someone's Instagram. Interesting vibes. She's pretty. She is very pretty. That's that's for sure. Like, that's no doubt. She's very pretty. She's got a definitely aesthetic. She also looks a little bit like fashion bubbles with a slight trinkle of an ed a little bit like it's a very specific aesthetic that i see you know silly so says honestly bray you're a nudist so your perception is going to be very different from those bubbles that usually slut shame at the tiniest slight of boob true caitlin says she's uh neutral so brands can put themselves onto her maybe oh maybe yeah in i guess any in industry there is so much drama and gossip in true. this influencer world that i honestly just want to stay as far away from it as possible because gossip don't make friends we need to talk about it i'm not sure how it is among adults in sweden these days because i was so young when i moved to london but here i'm really always so shocked at how ridiculously common it is for people either people you know or people you only just met to start gossiping about you know other people in your industry or about celebrities that neither of you have met or will ever meet this will never change don't even think it would it's not going to change. Your fans are going to do it. Your viewers are going to do it. The people who say they love you and rooting for you will do it. And they're not always doing it maliciously. I think they've done studies on this, how gossiping is an amazing way to bond with people. It also sets you apart from other people in terms of morals and values and makes you know, like, who are the people who think like me, right? So ultimately, I would say that you're not going to escape it. And that's why a lot of people isolate from socialization. I mean, I won't even pretend like it's not a heavy part of why I decide to socialize less as the years go on because I already have my established group of friends, so I don't need new ones. And two, every time I try to interact with these like online people, they just lie and they're they're useless. Like they're all kind of crappy behind closed doors unless they're not. There's obviously exceptions. And then you don't even have the opportunity to get closer to them anyways because we're all living our own lives. We only met because of work. Like realistically, Unless you spend time with people outside of work, you're only ever knowing them on the clock, period. So you know them and they're good people or bad people or whatever, but you're not like knowing them. So of course, like gossip and things like that are going to come in. But let's be real, as a girl who grew up in a Middle Eastern home, girl, we're gossiping about you and we'll say it to your face, but like we are talking about you. We're never telling a lie about you, though. That's very important. Even as a family, when we talk about people, even like people we don't know, we try very hard not to lie. We might think it's our opinion and it's true, but we do not want to lie. Because again, lying takes the fun out of it. Lying feels malicious. Lying feels evil. You know, lying just feels evil to me if you lie about somebody. 
But if you're just saying like, oh my God, did you see that she slept with her like coworker's husband? That's crazy. Then you're just like saying what's true. It happened. It's going, that's what, that's what's going on. Okay. Don't act like that's not what's happening. You know, that's different. But if it didn't happen and you say it, that's fucked up. This as some kind of entertainment, like it's a juicy, fun conversation to talk about what a bitchy person this or that author is, or, you know, the rumored sex life of Barry Keoghan. Personally, I can't stand it. I absolutely cannot bear this type of conversation. First of all, because, you know, they're mean and almost certain to be false anyway. It's about, you know, kicking up, you know, kicking at people who are more successful or glamorous than we Yeah, that's not good. That's like negative. That's like lying. Don't lie. I wish people would just like not lie because I think that's the only part of it that really sucks. And also like mind your business when it's things like that aren't your business. But then, you know, we are. And usually these rumors are just so nasty. Like See, rumors, about rumors, rumors are don't rumor. Don't do that. The way someone looks, how out of shape they are, about bad cosmetic surgery they've had done, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, no, first of all, I'm going to talk about your botched nose job, girl. Come on. <laughs> Kim's BBL was so bad in hindsight. I just saw a video yesterday and I was like, she's so beautiful. This BBL and she knows it was a trend. They all did it for money. Don't fuck with me right now. It is so obvious to me that Kim never needed that BBL, but she's so pretty now. That BBL was so ugly on her in hindsight. I was watching a video of her and I was like, oh my God, but isn't that funny? And they said it. They said they all got BBLs for the trends. And then even Ch Black China talked about this. She's like, it's just a trend, guys. We do it because it's popular and then we take it out. And I was like, I see, I'm not dedicated to, to anything like that. There ain't no way I'm going to do surgery for a trend or to be popular. But people make decisions. So, yeah, we're going to talk about your botched nose job. But also, at the same time, it happens, girl. Someone, it's okay. Secondly, and can I be completely honest here? I just find it boring mm. these conversations are so uninteresting and brainless i feel like oh i will say and this is a episode of sex in the city if every time we get together we're only gossiping and we're not having real conversations about life then i'm gonna get bored but sprinkle in some gossip you know but like yeah if we're getting together and we're not actually discussing philosophy or ideas or content creation or our work then i'm gonna get bored it's like the people, if we only hang out and drink, I'm going to get bored. If we only hang out and do something, I'm just going to get bored, right? Listening is just like a fucking waste of time. Why would I care about these people and their sex lives and lip fillers and rumored bad personalities? Like, mm -hmm. why do we care? Are our own lives so dreary and dramaless that we have to like invent nonsense about Philippa in marketing or Sally Rooney? Like, why are we spending our precious time talking about people we do not know? Instead of talking about, you know, you and me and what we're going for and, you know, our struggles and what our triumphs are. Like, how is that not more interesting? I guess, like, I'm a narcissist that way. I like talking about me. I like hearing about you. I don't care about Zendaya's financial situation. It especially rubs me the wrong way when it's woman on woman meanness. For every successful woman, there has been a bit of a struggle to reach that point. We can almost assume it. So to then immediately be criticized and gossiped about by other women or other girls out of envy or out of, you know, using gossip as a sort of routine social behavior. How disappointing. Mm. Yeah, I'm going to disagree that talking about people is negative if it's honest and done with compassion. But I'm going to say talking about people without compassion and with malicious intent is bad. I think these are very important distinctions just so that I want to make in this conversation with you guys, just because I think they're very different. Yeah. That we would just like do this to each other. And this isn't just like 13, 14 year old mean girlies. I find this behavior to be so common, even with like adult outspoken feminists. It's tiring, but you know, I get it. It's also human behavior to like root for the underdog only to like the moment that the underdog becomes a top dog to start campaigning to like bring down the top dog again because I mean who do they think they are like reaching such heights and so on yada yada again how tiring mm. so actually if I think about it like the people I call friends instead of acquaintances like the Ooh. people I look forward to seeing and talking to Ooh, I gotta mm, got start saying acquaintances too none of them are the least bit gossipy 
Now, let's be real here. I'm not saying that I'm a saint or that I'm trying to be one. It's actually quite the opposite. I don't believe that there are good or bad people. I think all humans are just that, like human, flawed and messy and imperfect. I'm just a curious person and I like honesty. Yeah, I don't get the point of the B-roll, guys. What is it? Is it? I'm confused by it. Is it, is it, is she the B-roll? I think it's interesting. What kind of content creator is she? For the discourse says I love Jenny Mustard. What is Jenny's vibe? I've never seen her before. I thought she was Je Jenny Nicholson or whatever. I'm confused. So is she like, why is she using herself as the B-roll? Is it just because it's like using a generic model, but she's using herself? Like, what is the, what am I supposed to get? Is she the girl next door? Is she a model? Like, what is her vibe? The so I would rather be honest with myself whenever I do show any type of inconsiderate behavior or think like ungenerous thoughts and be curious about why I do it. Seriously, I wouldn't be a very good litfic novelist if I couldn't look at human behavior and human flaw in this unsentimental way, accepting that none of us are heroes and none of us are villains. And often, yeah, when I don't come up with some far-fetched excuse for my behavior, it does kind of stop it. Like, Mean gossip, for example. I don't engage with the stuff at all. If we do right. this gossipy, criticizing mean girl business as either a kind of social lubricant to be part of the group or because we're feeling envy, then at least the first one is quite easy to stop. And as for envy, I think that's harder because it's in our nature to compare ourselves with others. And this is something that we'll probably have to deal with more or less until we die. I do find though that like reminding myself to work towards like personal bests instead of competing with anyone else is my preferred mode of being. When mm. I think about all this, like all I really want to do is like good work, challenge myself and like nurture a really strong sense of confidence. Of course, I want my second novel to be better than my first novel, but do I want it really to be better than anyone else's novel? What does that even mean? Mm. Like, I like to think of myself as a singular entity, like basically doing my own thing in my own bubble, which Ooh. has nothing to do with anyone else's bubble. True. There will always be people that are more successful and more lucky and more talented than I am. Why? Pay I think this is like really important, actually. I do think you should live like that. I tried to live like I'm in a bubble doing my own thing. That's why I say like I come home and I have a bubble and this is my bubble and this is where I live and this is where I mode. Right? This is where I just get to be the most me. And when being the most me, it's just like the best vibe in the whole world. I feel so lucky that I get to be just the most me with myself and with my partner and my cat. And we get to just be. We just get to exist. We get to live our life. So I really agree with her. And I do agree with her in general that gossip is bad. If it's negative, being envious is bad. Like it's it's furthest from joy and closest to evil in a philosophy sense, right? So when 1000% agree with her in this regard, like I don't think we're disagreeing. I would say it's okay to talk about people as long as you're not lying about people. I think it's okay to ponder and sort of meditate on how other people's lives are and how maybe you do or don't like it. But I think what's most important is that you kind of know why you're doing it. And I do agree with her that being around really negative people that are always like talking badly about people is gross. Like don't shush it's like the difference between complaining and venting to me they're very specific and different and then the difference between like gossiping negatively and gossiping gossiping in a healthy way i think like those things are very very different and specific but i think she's mostly right using the word bubble here that we want to focus on ourselves and our bubble and what we're doing because the world ain't doing the same thing we're doing you know everyone's doing something different pay attention to what they're doing and why like spend time with people who take pleasure in bringing other women and other girls down like i'm not 13 14 anymore i don't want to pick or be picked on my terrifying career as a mean girl was short-lived i just want to work i want to talk about work with friends and i want to make out with david like honestly <laughs> i just want Cute. to kind of mind my own business i think that's the most Cute. beautiful way to live and if another woman is more successful than I am in my own field, I want to have the confidence enough to be able to celebrate her triumph without feeling like her success somehow lessens my own. Mm, I mean, it makes mm. sense, doesn't it? Or do you, you got to learn to be happy for people's happy, guys. Get that compersion going. I just I love being happy for people's happy. Now, you know what the dilemma is? And this is a moral dilemma. How do you be happy for someone's happy when their happy is something you find to be immoral? And that's really where the difficulty is. There are so many people I know that I'm like usually happy for people's happy. The only time I'm basically 
I struggle to be happy for people's happy is if I think the thing they're doing is like very immoral, then I have a really hard time and I can't lie. I'm like, hey, like, I'm glad you're happy, but I'm kind of sad that this is the way that you seek happiness, considering that so many people had to get hurt in order for you to be happy in this particular way. And you always got to make sure it kind of coinciding with the video I made this last Monday about love the sinner, not the sin from the queer perspective. It's like, I know so many people that are like, I'm happy you're happy, but I'm kind of sad like you're queer. I'm sad you're on OF or I'm sad you're like doing this, what you're doing on YouTube. It's like maybe, but also that's a morals difference. That's why it feels bad to be happy for someone's happy when you don't think it's good. You know what I mean? Discord said Jenny Mustard is a vegan feminist, fashion fashionable and um began as a minimalist when she started YouTube. She has transitioned to lifestyle blogs, but she seems like a very nice person, very chilled. She's been to the same partner for a long time and recently she's an author of her first book that came last year. She's defo not a mean girl in my opinion. Yeah. She obviously does not seem like a mean girl. Um the title is Am I Mean Girl question mark. So obviously no. But it's a good conversation to be having. I agree with her. I do not want to hang out with the mean girls. I do not want to hang out with the negative gossipers. I do not want to hang out with people that only talk about people so they can avoid their own responsibility and accountability. And I certainly don't want to hang out with people that lie. You disagree? Like celebrity gossip or office shit talking or, you know, friend group behind your back conversations. Do you engage? And if so, why? Like, I'm not criticizing you if you are. Again, we're only human. I just think that it's often nothing more than routine meanness that we, you know, all would be just happier if we kind of skipped. It's not cute. We're not being attractive, spreading rumors and criticisms. Right. And also, my God, isn't it just the uttermost waste of time? Anyway, thank you so much for today. I think we're done. I've been thinking about this a lot for years. So it was nice to like air out some of my thoughts on the matter. I want to be a tender hearted, sweetheart lover girl, not a mean one. Doesn't that sound quite nice? That's it, my loves. Mm. Thank you for watching and spending time with me. I can't wait to hear what you all make of this. So see you in the comments or, you know, in my next video. Okay, thanks for today. See you soon. Bye, bye-bye. Interesting. So OK Days looks like that's her book. I will say I agree with everything she said on on a basic level, absolutely. The nuance I would bring into the conversation I, is, is the, just that I think that talking about people in a way that is true and honest and reflective is fine because you're dissecting and figuring yourself out. It's kind of like a reality check. Like, oh, my friend I know says like her married coworker is the best sex she's ever had in her life. Should I have sex with my coworker who's married? It's like, well, hey, listen, OK, maybe not. But also, how do we have a conversation about the nuance between why people do things that are uncouth or like maybe immoral in a nuanced way, meaning like they're not the devil incarnate or maybe have a blunt conversation about them being the devil incarnate. And I think that's the difference here. I love talking about people. I will not lie about you. And I'll say it to your face if you ask. But also, girl, I'm sorry. Like, you sleeping with your married coworkers just too interesting. I got to talk about it. But also, you know, it's because it's a moral dilemma. Ultimately, it's because it's a moral dilemma. And that's what's interesting. But don't lie about people. Ugh, that's the absolute worst. I do not appreciate people who lie about people. It's so unattractive. It is so unattractive. You know, I think that's the part that I'm like, ew. But I do remember this one lady I worked with. Oh, my God. I would come into work and I would barely have my uniform on. And she was like, Brittany, 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 did you hear what happened? I was like, what happened? And the problem is, is if you talk to her, like, everybody's going to know. And even if you're just trying to, like, I would, I would, like, humor her because, I don't know, she's like, old lady, who cares? And I would just be like, oh, my God, really? Whoa, that's crazy. And then she'd like, Brittany agrees with me. And I'm like, well, OK, everybody slow down. I do have this habit in public of being like an agreeable listener. And so it makes even on stream. And so it makes people feel like I'm agreeing with them. But I'm just like trying to acknowledge that I heard you. I got to stop doing that because I am not agreeing with you. I'm just like not arguing with you. OK, anyways, she was a nice coworker, but obviously she was also just like that's the way she made it through work. She like made it through work by talking about other people. She wasn't mean, but she was negative. And I think that's what eventually wore her, like wore me down on her. It's like she was just so negative. And I don't think anyone wants to deal with a negative Nancy, which is the difference between complaining and venting. Nobody minds if you have a vent sesh and you really got to get it off your chest. Nobody wants to hear you complain every day, bro. We all have problems too, okay? 
We all can't pay our bills too, everybody relax. Good video, this is Jenny Mustard. I'll go ahead and share the link in chat so you guys can check her out. So funny that I thought she was Jenny Nicholson. I'll never get over it, hilarious. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine Not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense I've been nothing but blessed So why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Done.